Having developed the idea of functions of several variables, we've seen how to differentiate them. Now let's look at how to integrate them. This actually turns out to be quite complicated in a lot of situations, although not in all situations. We've seen how the concept of an integral in one dimension leads to the idea of an area. So the integral of a function f of x from a to b leads to an area, provided the function is positive. For functions of two variables, an integration over that function in both of those variables will lead to a volume. So if I have three-dimensional space and a two-dimensional surface in it, and I want to integrate that function over some region in the xy plane, then the integral over that function will give me the volume of this shape. So the question is, how do we go about calculating this? Now, if we just recall how we went about calculating areas under functions, we chopped up the area into thin strips and added up those strips using a limiting process which gave us a Riemann sum. For functions of several variables, we do exactly the same thing. We look at the domain where we integrate over in the xy plane, split it up into small sections, and in each of those small sections, we imagine the area under the function as a square pillar. Then we add up the volumes of each of those individual pillars to get the total volume. So if we have our volume, which looks like this, and we take a subsection of that, then the idea is, is that this small volume can be approximated by an area times a height. And the height we choose at some estimation of the height of the overall thing, at some sample points, x star and y star, just like we did before. Now, from a top-down perspective, from a top-down point of view, say we want to integrate over a rectangle, and our limits are a to b, in the x direction and c to d in the y direction. Let's call the region R where we want to integrate the function f of x and y over and let's choose a strip in the x direction and a strip in the y direction. Consider this particular area. Let's call this R x i minus 1 x i and like we did before we'll call this small separation delta x and we'll do the same in the y direction and have a distance delta y. And then we just choose a sample point in the shaded area to represent the value of the function. And then the volume of that thin strip will be approximately the function evaluated at the sample point times delta x times delta y. And then we just do exactly what we did before for one dimensional integration, is we just sum over all of these little cells. So we can write the volume as a limiting process. And the limiting process, if I sum j from one to n and i from one to m, then I'm taking the limit as m and n tend to infinity. Now the details of how we go about doing that don't really concern us, but this gives us an idea of how to define a multiple integral. So here we've got a double integral over x and y in a sort of sensible notation which goes with our normal integration notation. Two integration symbols and a dx and a dy. One of those integration symbols goes with dx and the other one goes with dy. The convention is, is that the inside integral goes with the inside differential. So this is the double integral of f of x of y over the rectangular region r, and it corresponds to the volume under the surface above the xy plane. More generally, we can let dx dy be an area differential, r can be an arbitrary shape, and then the volume v is the integral over the region r of f of x and y times the area differential. The region r is fairly easy for rectangles. It can be extremely complicated for other shapes and one often has to do a change of coordinate system to accommodate them. We'll look at that a bit later. For rectangles, if R is a rectangle, we can write this down. We can write this down in set notation as a set of points X and Y, such that X is bound between A and B, and Y is bound between C and D. In this case, we can treat the integrals a little bit like partial derivatives, in the sense that they don't depend on each other. So we can write, so here the inner integral is associated with X, the outer integral symbol, with y. So just to be clear, we could do this with brackets, just to make it much clearer what symbols go where. Now, in fact, there's a theorem which says that provided the limits don't depend on any of the variables, we can swap them around just like we do for partial derivatives. And it's super important to remember that we swap the differentials as well. So the integral from a to b and the integral of c to d of f of x and y 
dy dx is the same as if we swap those integrals around. This is equivalent to swapping partial derivatives around. And this only works provided these limits are constant. So let's do a quick example. For rectangular regions, it's not too complicated. So let's do an example. Let's find the integral of the function x minus 3y squared over the region x and y given by. Okay, so first thing to do is to just draw a quick picture to understand the region that we're integrating over. So x is bound between 0 and 2, so this is the region here. Let's write down the integral as a double integral, and let's write in the dx dy for the, dx, for the area element. And the inner integral I identify with x, so that's 0 to 2, and then the y1 goes from 1 to 2. Just to be super clear, we can put the x equals and the y equals on the limits. To evaluate this, I just integrate them one at a time. So I can write the dx integral inside the dy integral, and it becomes our new integrand once we evaluate the limits. And the limits apply to x and not to y. So only the upper limit is going to come into this, so this gives me 2 squared, which is 4, minus 3y squared times 2. And now we've just got a normal integral to work out. So that's just the integral 4 minus 6y squared dy from 1 to 2. And that just works out to be minus 12. If I do the integrals the other way around, I do the y1 first. So integrating with respect to y, I treat x as a constant, which also comes out to be minus 12. 